Algebra 2 Cram, New York State, Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Basics, Sign of Trigonometric Functions, Concept Number 16, Trigonometric Values for 30 Degrees. All right, so the odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is pretty slim, okay? But I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 Master. What we're doing here is so effective. I'm coaching you to turn your wants and desires of getting an A or perfect, perfect test scores into a brand new paradigm. I want to include everyone who needs a boost in Algebra 2. And if I can stick every single math student with a syringe containing a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius, I probably would, although it sounds a little crazy. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to get your healthy dose by ordering the complete Algebra 2 cram session beyond the trigonometry series, okay? You have lots of friends, pairs, classmates, and or colleagues who are probably taking Algebra 2 with you. They could really benefit from this entire cram session as well. So spread the word to them and tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so that they too can order the complete cram session. You'll be glad you spread the word because um, they'll make great study buddies. The last but not least before we delve into this concept um, of trigonometric values for the angle 30 degrees, I wanna highlight something to you. Cramming often has a bad rap, but what people are actually thinking of is hurrying which is the result of fear and can consequently be destructive to your learning process. We're not hurrying here, we're cramming, and there's a huge difference. Hurrying is jam-packing tons and tons of unorganized information into your mental, spiritual DNA over a tiny amount of elapsed time, whereas cramming is taking quantum leaps in your understanding in an organized way in what seems to have been an instant, okay? So let's delve into this concept. Trigonometric values for 30 degrees. Express the exact values of the sine, cosine, and tangent function for the angle 30 degrees, okay? So definitely press pause if you need to, and I'll now give you a moment to think Write out your solutions or your conceptual train of thought. And if you don't have a, a sequence of thought regarding this, that's completely fine. That's why we're here. So just sit tight, press pause, do what you need to do. And for the while you're figuring out the answer, for those of you who are wondering what theta is, it's a Greek variable that's often used to represent some angle. <laughs> that's unnamed, okay, so it's just like a general, it's like saying the sine of x, you can look at this as x, but because when we're dealing with angles, x is often used to express the x coordinate, um, theta is substituted sometimes. All right, so hopefully by now you were able to press pause and um, come up with a solution, but if not, that's completely fine. What I wanna highlight to you is before expressing um, the trigonometric values for 30 degrees, we need to understand the concept of something called standard position, which if you watch some of my other trig chrome sessions, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? Doing this simplifies finding all the trigonometric values for the angle 30 degrees or any angle theta, okay? So 30 degrees is an angle in standard position in quadrant one. And because it's a st angle in um, standard position that will occur in quadrant one on our X, Y Cartesian coordinate plane, it's gonna have about six to seven key features. I lose count of these features, that's why I say six to seven. Basically, it's gonna have some defining features, okay? First off, as highlighted here, the vertex is located at the origin. This is an O actually, not a zero, but it does represent the coordinate point zero, zero, okay? X being zero, Y being zero. 
or the center of our Cartesian coordinate plane. So the vertex of the angle, you know, the little point uh, that an angle extends from, is located at the origin, okay? And this comes in handy. You'll see why in a few. The ray on the positive x-axis, which is semi-indicated here with this bold highlighting, is called the initial side ray, okay? The other ray in quadrant one is called the terminal side ray, okay? And this is where the angle theta terminates. But remember, theta in our situation is 30 degrees, okay? And just so we can keep things neat, we're going to call the terminal side ray R, of course, being short for ray, okay? But let's say we were to play around a bit and we were to cut off this um, terminal side ray and turn it, turn it into a line segment. We're going to do so by assigning the point P, P being short for point, and P has these hypothetical coordinates x, y, x corresponding to its x coordinate and y corresponding to its y coordinate, okay? So um, the horizontal extent of our newly uh, formed segment, which is cut off right here at point P is going to be x, which again is the x coordinate. This x coordinate represents this x coordinate, okay? And the height extends, so we're resolving this newly formed segment into its x and y coordinates, thus the height is going to extend to y, okay? y being its y coordinate. And looky, 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 what do we have here? We have um, an imaginary right triangle. So let me just indicate that to better define it for you. You know, this little box that they always use to highlight right triangles. Okay, all right. So notice that our guy um, Ray, or R, is now the hypotenuse of a right triangle formed by the resolution of the terminal side Ray cut off at point P into its X and Y coordinate, okay? All righty then. And because uh, we drew the triangle extents, that is the adja uh, adjacent side and the opposite side, um, to the extent of its x and y coordinates, note that um, for quadrant one, the x and qu y coordinates are always going to be positive, okay? But for some angles, they might not be. Like, let's say you're in quadrant two, x is going to be negative, y is positive. If you're in quadrant three, x is going to be negative as well, y will be negative. And if you're in quadrant four, x will be positive, but y will be negative, all right? So when we're dealing um, with the coordinates, they have signs, but our segment length is actually a measurement of length calculated using the distance formula and the origin. That's why it was so important that the vertex of our theta angle, which we'll insert in a few um, that has a value specifically of 30 degrees, is located at the origin because the, the xy coordinate points for, the, um, for this location is 0, 0. So in order to measure our segment length, all we need really is um, the value of x and y. And to do that, we just use the distance formula. Instead of d, we're going to say r is equivalent to the square root of its x coordinate squared. Usually, the different distance formula takes um, the final x location right here and the initial x location, but we don't need to do that because the initial location is zero, so we don't need to double up on writing unnecessarily. So the x coordinate squared plus the y coordinate squared. And again, the distance formula would say y minus y squared, but we know our terminal location is y. We know our initial y location is zero, so we don't need to you know, do all that extra stuff, okay? So the, and because we're squaring the coordinate points, that will get rid of any negative sign. And then taking the square root undoes the effects of squaring, okay? After we um, take the sum, of uh, both points squared. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you 
that r is the measurement of a segment length and it's always going to be positive but x and y may or may not be negative or positive depending on where your terminal side ray for your angle um, terminates okay all right i hope i didn't confuse you okay so all in all um the trigonometric values for 30 degrees is going to depend on the ratios of x y and r now let's start off with the sine okay so what i want to highlight to you is that the sine of theta is always going to be the opposite side but since we're on our cartesian coordinate plane it's going to be the value of the y coordinate because the opposite side would essentially rise to the level of the y coordinate and i'm not saying that for 30 degrees this opposing side let's just indicate our 30 degrees sorry for the lag time with my writing <laughs> i promise i keep on promising i'm gonna upgrade my whole computer system but i'm a little cheap so sorry about that I'm not cheap just frugal i guess okay so the side opposing um 30 degrees which is the opposite side rises to a level of one what i'm trying to tell you is that this value may not always be one but the ratio of the opposing side um is going okay the ratios are going to be one radical three down here to two okay that's what the ratios are always going to be for 30 degrees so it's important to memorize this because this could rise to a level of let's say two this could be two radical three and this could be four so I'm not telling you these are the exact values, but what I am saying is the ratios will always be a one. You know, this side will simplify to one when the dust settles this, a radical three, and this a two. And in case you're wondering, radical three has a, a value of approximately 1.7. I think it's three something. So it's about 1.7, okay? The ratios will always simplify to these values if you were to put them in a fractional form. So like, in essence, the y coordinate over here would be one, but it doesn't have to be one, remember that. And then the hypotenuse is going to be two. So the segment length will be two. Or if it's greater than, the um, ratios of these will simplify to these numbers, okay? I hope you're getting what I'm saying, I really do. Because when I first learned this, it was really tough, so you'll get it. Now for the cosine of 30 degrees, okay, that's the second thing we have to explore. It's going to be the adjacent side which corresponds to the extent of the x-coordinate, which in this case is a positive radical 3, divided by our segment length, or our hypotenuse of 2, okay? And then tangent has nothing to do with the segment length. It only has to do with the opposing side and um, the adjacent side with regard to 30 degrees, or the y-coordinate an x-coordinate and that's going to be um, a radical 3 over uh, 2 okay all right so thanks for your time I mean not radical 3 over 2 it's radical 3 over 3 and you might be wondering well how do I if okay if the tangent is basically the opposite side or the corresponding y coordinate divided by the corresponding x coordinate, you might be thinking, okay, well, we're supposed to be getting, um, let me show you, 1 over radical 3. But for some reason, in the world of math, it was decided that it's not cool to have 
uh, unsimplified square root in the denominator. So what you then have to do is something called rationalizing the denominator. And that's simply multiplying the fraction by 1 in the form of the square root in the denominator over divided by itself. So radical 3 over 3 is essentially the same thing as multiplying this 1 over radical 3 by 1. And you'll notice that doing so is going to get rid of the unevaluated um, square root in the denominator. So squaring a radical 3 or multiplying it by itself is going to give you 3. And then 1 times radical 3 is just 3. Okay, so that's how you got that. You know, I'm so, like, I don't even know why I said um, 2. Yeah, but this is pretty much it. So the exact values of the sine, cosine, and tangent for the angle 30 degrees is 1 over 2, the square root of 3 over 2, and the square root of 3 over 3, respectively. Okay? All right. And as you can see, intellectual comprehension of this material is not difficult at all. And after this short amount of time, it takes you to complete the entire Algebra 2 cram session beyond the trigon uh, trigonometry series, you're going to be able to answer a complete battery of questions about all Algebra 2 concepts. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to order this complete cram session. Thanks for your time.